next 3.1 just released so let's see what's in it so i am in the official git repository of next framework so let's go inside the release tab and let's see as you can see there is a, a minor release 3.1.0 let's uh, go through their documentation and explore the new features and improvements so first of all you can see the highlights and it says a lot of improvements in the documentation and you can see it so let's go to the next.com and see what's new in the documentation page so i can already see the changes in uh, in, the, in the grid in the documentation grid and there is a little bit darker they have made the uh, side of this showcase uh, scroller a little bit darker then if you scroll down a little bit I, I guess this was there in the first version itself but i'm not sure let me know in the comment the landing page looking pretty slick and it's looking better than before so let's go inside the docs and let's see what is there in the documentation so documentation i can see some small content changes other than that i think uh, they have made some design improvement uh, that's it i guess i guess that's the changes for the uh, documentation so let's see what other changes they have for us they're saying experimental component island and server only component so as you know uh, in next uh, as it's a, it is a SSR framework so what you can do you can create uh, only client side component and those component will only be rendered in client side right so just like that you can uh, create component that will only be rendered in the server and then it will be mounted in the uh, front end so let's go and see what is there inside that server component so for uh, for server component you have to uh, to create a server component you just need to add the suffix server before the view file name uh, and if you want to do the client client is already there client was there from uh, the version 2 itself so there is nothing new in the client but there is the, this new thing called server component let me find out if i can find some uh, more reference about the server component as it's a new feature i haven't tried it yet but i will obviously make a video about this feature server component or maybe i will include it in my next uh, full course video so let's search in the documentation i guess the search shortcut is command k so let's server component okay so we have this standalone server component uh, let's see so yeah standalone server components standalone server components will always be rendered on the server as i've said when their props update this will uh, be result in a network request that will update the rendered html play place okay guys so just like i said if you want to uh, use this feature you need to go to the next config and then you have to enable this option component island and you have to uh, set it to true then you can use the uh, server component uh, feature it's just like uh, if you have if you are coming from the next environment then you know that uh, they they also have something similar server props i don't know because i am not a i have not used next uh, in that deep level so you can check it okay you can check and you can let me know what uh, what's there in component island okay so it's pretty sleek feature i guess i'll be using it a lot in the upcoming videos so let's see then uh, the next thing we have is next ready next use next data and use seo meta these are the feature i was waiting for i will be real with you okay the next ready next the next ready hook and then the use next data composable so let me let me uh, tell you what this is okay i know i have an idea i mean what this will be okay so when you are uh, when you fetch the data from the server using uh, async or maybe fetch use async something like that we use right use async data or fetch uh, so what it does it automatically fetch the data and then it it uh, give it gives you a, a reference right so what happens is uh, in the back they also cache that data uh and they cache that data to in in memory level so what you can do you can use use next data to tap into those caches and then you can uh, use the data from throughout the application so let me just go to that documentation and let's see what they have to say about it so search use <clears throat> search use next data so as you can see use next data gives you access to the current cache version of the 
use async data use lazy async use fetch all the fetching methods so what happens is next store the data with the key you give so if you can recall my in my previous video i also use use async data right and there i have given a keys for all the url that we have uh, created right so what you can do now with nux 3.1 you can tap into those uh, data and then you can um, you can access those data using uh, use nux data so you can see in the in this example it says uh, api post so it will uh, fetch the data from the api post and there is a key called post right if you if you were using use async data then the key would be the first um, parameter and then there would be the second parameter would be the callback function so in case of use case you are giving the key explicitly right so what will happen if you uh, if you now use this composable use next data what will happen and if you give the keys then it can uh, detect it can, it can get the data for you okay so this will be a pretty neat feature i guess let's see what what will be the use cases i can't think of a use cases right now but surely there will be a lot of use cases and we'll be trying to include it in our in our next videos or maybe the next part of the course that uh, are already published in the in the youtube channel so you can go and check that out it's about uh, a url shortener we have created a full-fledged url shortener including the tracking features so that's a pretty neat and free course so go check that out uh, maybe you can already see uh, the link in the description so the next thing they have is use miss SEO meta as the name suggests I guess this would be some uh, composable for setting the meta tags already there are like different hundred different ways of doing that but let's see what uh, they are saying this time let's see what's new in the SEO meta and SEO server meta so as you can see the documentation says the SEO meta and SEO server meta composable uh, lets you define uh, the sites SEO meta metadata uh, with the TypeScript support so I guess um, everyone is going to use that a lot so right now let me show you what I'm using right now for one of my project okay so if I take you to uh, a project of mine and if you take you to the next config I'm using a external package for that I'm using a package called uh, next next SEO kit I guess uh, that's the name next SEO kit so what it allows it gives you uh, the it, it gives you some uh, extra composable to set the all the metadata and all the JSON for SEO stuff I, I use it a lot for SEO of course so uh, now what now it do uh, if you use this uh, SEO server meta it will give you a flat object of whatever uh, the uh, title whatever the meta description you are going to use so as you can see it has uh, like a lot of feature like OG title for description for uh, Twitter card image all the meta description and key you can use and it will give you a flat object and it will be set to your page so I guess SEO kit your days are gone now everyone is going to use the server SEO meta so that's why I guess next was waiting for uh, to release and I saw in some of their in some in one of their Twitter posts then they are saying the this feature the SEO feature would be inbuilt so there is there is no need for installing a new uh, call new package right now so you can just tap into this you can just use this composable and then you can uh, do that okay we'll be obviously using it in uh, our upcoming videos but here you go this is how you can use it right so this is pretty cool feature I guess and then there is the nitro pack hold 2 they have also migrated to white 4 white 4 and nitro pack I guess uh, these two needs their own videos but let's see for the sake of this video what's there in the nitro pack 2 okay so those of uh, you who don't know what nitro pack is nitro pack is uh, is the that is uh, powering uh, our uh, the next uh, application so all the server thing you see that happening that is all powered by unjs nitro so if you are not familiar with it i highly recommend you to go to the unjs unjs uh, organization in github and then check the repositories so all the thing you see in unjs for example uh, the nitro the h3 all this um, all this feature is used inside uh, the next framework and they, they, they use they are using these uh, packages they have used these packages to build the next framework so for example nitro for like for, as a build tool and build and deploy tool for example h3 h3 is the um, backend framework uh, that we use inside the server route in next 
and then o fetch the we uh, the use fetch composable that is actually derived uh, from this uh, o fetch library and then there is ipx which is powering the next image module so if you are not into all this stuff and also you want to become a uh, next uh, developer next pro developer then i guess you should uh, dig a little bit deeper and then go inside this library and check what is there okay some of, of you might be using uh, next.js and also hosting it in some proprietary tools such as like Vercel, uh, netlify where you don't need to uh, set up the server then uh, in that case it is very easy to uh, like deploy your application in just one click but it gets harder when you even ha you have to build the infrastructure on your own for example if you are uh, spinning up a ec2 in that case uh, things become very hard right things were very hard in terms of like hosting a nux2 application but with the help of nitro and the plugins they provide right you can uh, you can leverage this nitro and their plugin to host it anywhere uh, you want for example if you are hosting it in ec2 then there is a, a plugin called em2 which you can use and that support nitro by default and you have just have to have a, a config file you can go and check out the nitro documentation for that and it will be like breeze or the hosting the back end and the front end part would be a breeze so yeah these are the i think these are the changes uh and i hope i have covered almost all of them and you can also what i wanted to convey through this video is to if you are learning some technologies then you have to go now you have to dig deeper you have to be active on the community and changes are coming what changes they have made what are the underlying architecture they are using all of these things you have to be uh, updated about so that's it for today guys and um, if you want to be updated with all this latest uh, next uh, stuff then do follow me on twitter i am also available on discord if you have any messages or if you have any problem or question you go to discord and join there okay, so i'll meet you in the next video and the next video would be the part two of the uh, project we have started uh, this week so do subscribe and like this video and if you have any uh, suggestion then comment that down i'll meet you in the next video till then stay blessed and stay happy